Hey everyone, Jason here. Today I'm gonna to be replacing the dock connector on an iPad mini 4. This is just gonna be a quick video. Let's get right to it. Here's what this PCB looks like. We're just gonna buzz right past this. This was sent here as logic board only. Okay, so first we're gonna remove the sticker from the bottom of the board. If we don't, it may get melted, although I'm not gonna use hot air on this. There's the bottom of the PCB. All right, let's get this under the microscope. It almost looks as if somebody may have done it before, but uh, hmm. I'm gonna take my 2027 with a T, uh, JS02 tip on it. And uh, first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna flood this whole area with leaded solder. And you know, let's put, let's put a little bit of flux on this to help it go in a little better. That was way too much flux. Don't use that much flux. All right, I'm gonna begin flooding these pads with leaded solder. And I'm doing this to lower the melting point. And I'm sorry, this is a really big, big area. It won't all fit in the camera view and I need to get the job done so I can't I can't spend a bunch of time scrolling back and forth. So what I'm doing, I'm just taking the whole area with this big blob of leaded and I'm making sure we've got plenty of it down in there. Now that I've got it switched over to leaded, I'm gonna take my tweezers here and I'm gonna get a hold of this dock flex up here and I'm gonna begin pulling on it right there. And as I lift up on it, I'm gonna heat I'm gonna start heating these pads. And as you can see, now don't pull up real hard. I mean, you gotta do this with a little bit of finesse. If you pull, pull, and I'm gonna get a little more solder on this so that I can transfer more heat. But if you pull too hard, you're gonna lift pads and then you gotta fix that. I used to do these primarily with hot air, but just not anymore. I mean, this, this works good. As long as you got enough heat transferring through your iron, you can heat this up and it will just, it will come right off without pulling pads. Look, the whole thing floated off. Oh God, did I lift a pad? No, <laughs> I didn't lift any pads. All right, so there we've got our old dot connector off of there. And we just look around here on it. Everything looks good, even the cracks in my bench. And now that that's off of there, I'm gonna take, and I'm just gonna continue to flood this with leaded. I'm gonna flood the total holy crap out of this. And I try not to get it on our little marker points at the ends, but it's not the end of the world if you do. All right, so now we've got this whole entire area switched over to leaded. I'm gonna grab a Q-tip with alcohol. And we're gonna clean this up nice and party. So now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to take and put just a tiny layer of flux on here. I mean just a baby layer because we can't very well clean off underneath here. We just need enough to help with soldering. So now we're going to take our brand spanking new Doc Flex connector and we're going to lay it on here. Just like that. And the way we're gonna line this up, and we're trying not to smear flux everywhere, we're gonna line up the square block in this corner here. And then we come down here to the bottom and we do the same down here. That square block needs to line up. So once we know we have both blocks lined up, I'm gonna use the same iron with the same tip, being careful not to unline it up. There we go. And and let's start tacking these down. I think we're still lined up. Thank you. 
So what we're doing here is we're trying to pull the solder up through the hole. So now that I've got it pretty well lined up, I'm going to grab a pair of tweezers here that I can use to push on this as I work. And the way I do these, I, I work down through here and I hold the flex down next to the pad so that we can pull the solder up through the hole and sort of push it down in there and see that it's working because we need a good solid connection on each one of these. And a lot of times I nitpick and I go back through and you'll, you'll see. I, there's no way I'll get this done without nitpicking. Now in my early stages of doing these, when I first started doing these, I, I would always try to make the solder on top look good. And if we wind up with some grainy looking spots where, you know, there's solder and and copper both here and it just sort of looks like crap on this side that's okay because <laughs> we're we're primarily now I'm gonna go back through here we are primarily worried about the solder between the pad and the pad here we want to make sure we got a good joint in between but yeah I used to go through here and float and I can see they're still going down a little farther I used to go through here and float these over the top with solder you know that's not a bad thing but it's not necessary. It only makes it look good. So now I just go through and I tin the pads up really good and I go through here with an iron and some flux and I try to pull that solder up through these holes. Which gives us very robust solder joints. Now it's not the prettiest thing in the world but it's just as good as what was on here before, maybe even a little bit stronger. So now we're going to use some alcohol and a Q-tip and I'm going to clean my flux off of here as carefully as possible. I try not to wipe any of the black coating off of the flex. Dun da 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 Alright, so that is almost a dock connector. Let's get a piece of tape on this. There we are, a freshly replaced dock connector. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it into a housing and we're going to give it a little bit of a test run. So here's us an iPad mini test assembly. Is that it? Yes, that's it. I could just plug in the battery and make sure it draws current, but I do, I would like to make sure it boots. I'm going to make sure it gets USB connect. All right, how can I do this? Because this is not the right board for this housing. We're wiggling the iPad mini four board into an iPad mini one housing so that I can get to the battery connector. There we go. Okay, so I've now dropped this thing into a test housing and I'm going to connect a charger with a USB amp meter hooked up. We're currently drawing one amp steady and the iPad is booting. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure this iPad will charge the battery and I'm going to make sure it will connect to a computer. I am not going to be testing the remaining of the features on this thing because I'm not going to fully install it into a housing, but this really was just a simple dock flex replacement. Uh, so I don't suspect that there's going to be any issues here whatsoever. So that is going to be it for this video. This is a really straightforward, successful repair, and I'm going to move on to my next one, which I also hope is straightforward and successful. I do thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Have a good day, everybody.